If you are new to cryptocurrencies and want to explore this topic, knowing about Ethereum is just a must. It's more than just world's second most popular digital currency. Ethereum is the entire infrastructure that provides crypto enthusiasts with lots of tools and useful functions. Which ones? Watch this video until the very end and you will know all the essentials about Ethereum for successful work with this blockchain. So let's get it on. Okay, so what is Ethereum? Ethereum is a second generation blockchain that is widely considered to be the second most popular crypto, well, after Bitcoin. But unlike the latter, Ethereum also functions as an operating system for the development of decentralized applications and also smart contracts. How is that possible? Ethereum operates on a decentralized computer network or distributed ledger called a blockchain, which manages and tracks the currency. Computers in the network verify the transactions and ensure the integrity of the data. Like any other crypto blockchain, Ethereum allows users to exchange money without the need for a central intermediary such as bank, which means the currency is nearly autonomous. Ethereum also allows users to make transactions nearly anonymously, even if the transaction is publicly available on the blockchain. But while people tend to think of Ethereum as a coin or token sometimes, it's really a whole infrastructure that can do a lot more than just enabling payments. For example, Ethereum serves as a basis for smart contracts and other dApps. So let's take a closer look at what it's used for. While Bitcoin primarily focuses on being just a digital currency, Ethereum aims to be a fully functional and open platform for developing applications. And this is where smart contracts come into play. The idea behind smart contracts was first described by computer scientist and cryptographer Nick Szabo in 1996. He wanted to provide a secure and trustworthy way for contracting between strangers on the internet. His intention was to make traditional contracts less expensive and more secure at the same time. So, following Zaba's vision of secure and decentralized agreements, cryptocurrency systems are based on multilateral agreements where all wallet holders are parties. These ideas were implemented by Vitalik Buterin, a Russian-Canadian programmer so he describes Ethereum as a decentralized mining network and software development platform rolled into one. Okay, now let me explain it to you in simpler words. A smart contract is a computer protocol that serves to digitally verify and enforce the performance and negotiation of contract without third parties. This is how different players can come together and create applications and services on a decentralized platform without having formal authority to control the process. It is an efficient and secure way to collaborate. But how smart contracts serve us, like ourselves, average users? Today, smart contracts are commonly used to fuel decentralized finance applications, or shortly, dApps. DeFi dApps provide services similar to the banking and financial industry like lending, borrowing, trading, and so on. And since we've tackled the topic of dApps, let's discuss them in detail. As we know, dApps can be built on Ethereum blockchain. And the main advantage of dApps is that their computation is decentralized. No single institution or authority controls the Ethereum network, and it is almost impossible to attack the network, which in turn provides an improved customer experience of reliable and secure decentralized applications. One of the first Ethereum-based applications is Uniswap. It allows users to trade and swap ERC-20 tokens without any intermediary on a highly decentralized network. A DApp consists of a backing code that runs on a disrupted peer-to-peer -peer network. It is like software designed to work in the Ethereum network without being controlled by a centralized system. So there is a direct interaction between the end user and the decentralized application providers. You see, an application qualifies as a decentralized when it's open source. For example, its code is available on GitHub, and it also uses a public blockchain-based token to fuel transactions and other operations. As we know, the most well-known examples of dApps are Uniswap, 
and also one inch network and also sushi swap. Similar to decentralized applications, Ethereum allows for building of complete decentralized organizations. So does it differ from any other company or organization that we see in real life? Well, sure thing. And here's how. Imagine working for a company where all decisions are made by all members, not just the founders and top managers. Basically, a DAO or decentralized autonomous organization is an organization in which the decision making is not in the hands of centralized authority, but preferably in the hands of certain designated authorities or a group of design people as a part of an authority. DAOs rely on smart contracts for decision making, which means a solution must go through the voting system first, which runs on a decentralized application. To be eligible for voting, each member needs to have native tokens of the system. The number of tokens represents that person's percentage of shares in their organization. As you can guess, the final decision of the proposal will be based on maximum votes. So the results of polls are publicly available, ensuring a transparent and fair process without tricks. And that's a truly democratic approach, I'd say. However, there is one thing about tokens that makes the whole process of running an Ethereum network a bit complicated, and it's called gas. Well, I'm not talking about car fuel, but it is a type of gas that actually drives transactions. Just like we need fuel to run a car, we need gas to run applications on the Ethereum network. So to perform any transaction within the Ethereum network, a user must pay a fee called gas. On the Ethereum network, gas is a unit that measures the computational power required to run a smart contract or a transaction. So if you want to send someone crypto in the Ethereum network or perform any operation that requires updates on the blockchain, you would have to shell out gas that costs others. In Ethereum, the transaction fees are calculated using a specific formula. So for every transaction, there is gas and its correlated gas price. The transaction fees equal the amount of gas required to execute a transaction multiplied by the gas price. The more gas you pay, the faster your transaction will be processed. When the Ethereum network is very congested, gas fees makes it dozen of bucks. So make sure not to do transactions during peak times. And when exactly is that? Well, make sure to watch our video guide on Ethereum gas fees, where we share the secret of saving on transactions. So go on and do it. And now that we've discussed how smart contracts work and fuel Ethereum-based services, it's high time to take a closer peek at the cryptocurrency itself. Okay, so what's basically Ether? Ether is Ethereum's cryptocurrency, and it is the fuel that runs the network. Like Bitcoin, Ether is a peer-to-peer -peer currency. Apart from being used as a means of payment, Ether also serves to buy gas, which is used to compensate for the computational power provided by miners who support the Ethereum network. With an Ethereum cryptocurrency wallet, you can send and also receive Ether or pay for goods and services where the digital currency is accepted as means of payment. Some platforms such as Coinbase even allow you to take custody of your own coins in a digital wallet, so you can make them less exposed to hackers. With its total market cap exceeding 170 billion of dollars, Ethereum is now used to fuel hundreds of decentralized apps, as well as means of payment and a long-term investment. Despite the large gas fees, is becoming more widely adopted because the network is switching from the proof of work algorithm to the proof of stake. And wait a minute here, what is that? Well, let me explain that to you. Initially, Ethereum network used the proof of work algorithm for performing payments, just like the Bitcoin blockchain does. All Ethereum transactions and the creation of new other coins used to be validated throughout a process called mining. You probably heard about it. This is where blocks are open, information is entered, the block closes and a hash number is created. So each new block that is created contains information from the previous block, creating a chain 
that cannot be manipulated or altered. But this process of block creation is very energy demanding and gas fees are too high, which is why Ethereum developers have decided to move on to more efficient process of block validations, the algorithm called proof of stake. The process of transition is called the merge and this switch totally changes how Ethereum network works. Okay, we'll not go into details right now because, well, you can always watch our video dedicated to that specific topic. So I'll leave the link right over here. Proof of stake is the second most frequently used consensus mechanism in blockchain technology. Contrary to the proof of work, there is no mining involved, which means the energy consumption is far below that of POW. In order to validate transactions and create new Ether, participants in the Ethereum network who want to be involved have to put up a certain stake in the network. For instance, by placing a certain amount of ETH in a wallet connected to the Ethereum blockchain. So what do we have right now? To create the next block on the chain, instead of miners verifying transactions, Ethereum now uses the owners of significant stakes to validate these transactions. These transactions stake their currency and earn rewards in the form of Ether for verifying transactions. However, stakers could lose their investment if they validate transactions that do not conform to Ethereum's rules. And by the way, even smaller investors can participate in the staking system and also earn some rewards. It is also expected that after the merge, the transaction fees being burned destroyed forever. It leads to fewer other in existence and a deflationary model that causes price to soar. You should understand first that the merge is just a part of moving to the concept of Ethereum 2.0. This network will address some major problems. The Ethereum 2.0 updates are designed to make the entire platform faster, more scalable and also more eco-friendly. And the latter, thanks to Ethereum's switch to proof-of-stake algorithm. Okay, and that was it for today, guys. I hope this video guide covered all the basic questions you had about Ethereum. And of course, if you want to go deeper into the details, I recommend watching our other videos in our channel. There is a large knowledge base created for you by the DeFi team. So until next time, see you around.